Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, and I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me on. Bartimaeus is a saint for our time. Jesus says to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. And followed him on the way. That's where this story gets tricky. Be careful what you wish for, Bartimaeus. <laughs> following Jesus on the way at this point in Mark's Gospel meant following Jesus into Jerusalem for his betrayal, his trial, and his death on the cross. Things were about to get much worse before they got so much better. I love the poetry in this story. At the start of it, Bartimaeus is on the sidelines along the road where Jesus and his followers were walking. At the end of the story, the same word for road is way and is used to tell the listener that Bartimaeus now followed Jesus on the way. Bartimaeus begins as an outsider on the margins. He becomes a follower of Jesus. And in between, there is a healing. I wonder if the healing in this story isn't really about a restoration of physical sight as much as it is a healing of restoration to wholeness, a restoration to community, a restoration to understanding that following Jesus means understanding things, seeing things that had remained unseen, either by choice or by chance. And I love that Jesus asks Bartimaeus what he wants him to do for him. Jesus does not assume what this person before him needs and make a decision for him. He asks Bartimaeus what Bartimaeus wants Jesus to do for him. Bartimaeus does not ask Jesus for money though he is, we are told, a beggar. Bartimaeus is not content to simply continue the status quo of his life, keeping him where he has always been, on the sidelines, alive perhaps, but not truly living. Bartimaeus wants healing in his core, Though it would mean walking toward the cross, though it would mean watching Good Friday unfold before his newly healed eyes, Bartimaeus wants in, for it is better than remaining on the sidelines, alive but not truly living. Be careful what you wish for, Bartimaeus. For following Jesus on the way also leads to the empty tomb and the promise of new life. In fact, through Good Friday is the only way to get there at all. Bartimaeus is a saint for our time. This time of pandemic, this time of racial reckoning, this time of awareness of the real danger that God's creation is in. It has been a time when many 
who have had the privilege of not seeing, the privilege of sitting on the side of the road, the privilege of just maintaining the status quo day to day, have had our eyes open. We have had our sight restored without even knowing we needed it. We have been healed, and it has been hard. It has been a time when many have seen what they could not or would not see before. It is a time when many have had their own come-to-Jesus moments, whether they would even call it that or not. It is a time when, out of a longing for all the same things for which Bartimaeus longed, many have said, Lord, I want to see. Lord, how we want to be healed. What we have seen in this time, or what we have seen more clearly, it can all feel a bit like walking with Jesus on the road to Jerusalem, with the cross coming into view on the horizon and no sight of any empty tomb. Not yet. We have seen the brokenness of our political system, or seen it again. We have seen the wealth gap widen and income disparity grow. We have seen the iniquities of race in this country. We have seen the precipice upon which so many of our families exist and how fragile the balance of their lives they knew really was. We have seen the power of fear to divide and so we are tired, we are weak, and we are worn. And so also we hear the longings of things to go back to normal, the current day version of the good old days. But we know now, because we have seen it, that the normal of before is not going to work because it never did. Lest I remind us, the good old days were not so good for everyone. At some point during Jesus' final week, Bartimaeus had to wonder if he wasn't better off back there back on the outskirts of town, back on the outside of Jericho, sitting in his usual comfortable spot with his hand outstretched. And each day on his journey with Jesus, he had to wonder. He had to make the decision every day to keep going. He probably remembered in that time his Jewish forebears who wondered in the desert if they weren't better off as slaves back in Egypt. And he probably kept hearing Jesus ask him what it was he wanted. And Bartimaeus kept choosing wholeness, kept choosing healing, one step along the way at a time. Wholeness and healing are everything God wants for us. But they aren't easy. It is the only hope of new life, a life worthy of living. But it isn't without hard struggle. There are things I know now in my life that I really wish I didn't have to know. There is pain and there is evil in this world that I really wish I did not have to see. But it is only because I know the things that I know and because I have seen the things that I have seen that I am at all able to lift a finger to change them. It makes me think of people who hate going to the doctor because they don't want to know what the doctor might tell them if they do. 
Of course, not going to the doctor does not change what is happening in our bodies. Not going only changes our ability to do anything about it if there is. It is knowing the things I wish I didn't know and seeing the things I wish I hadn't seen that compels me to reach my hand out on the side of the road of my life, from the outskirts of my own road, to raise my hand and say, Jesus, I want to be healed. I want to be made whole. I want to live the life to which you call me. A full life. Not an easy life. I do not want to sit on the sidelines anymore, refusing to see. Jesus asks Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? Can you imagine Jesus asking you the very same thing this morning? You, specifically. You, on the side of the road of your life, wanting more, wanting healing, wanting wholeness, wanting to live the life to which you were called, no matter how hard or scary how unknown it may be, or how uncomfortable it might just make you. Can you hear Jesus say to you, what do you want me to do for you? Can you hear your answer? Can you see Jesus meet your outstretched hand with his own and invite you to follow him along the way? Follow him to the Jerusalem that awaits, yes, but to the abundant life that waits for you on the other side. Precious Lord, take our hands. Lead us on, let us stand. We are tired, we are weak, and we are worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead us on to the light. Take our hands, precious Lord. Lead us on. Amen.